Welcome back to Webcast. I'm Amy Briggs Maka, Product Manager for Syngenta Flowers, enjoying a beautiful day at our California headquarters. In today's session, uh, we'll re we are excited to review our brand new Petunia introductions for the 2021-22 season. As a special treat, a little later on, we'll have our technical expert, Jamie Gibson, who will be sharing with us some specific tech tips on our new Funhouse Potpourri Petunias. But before we get to that, let's check out what else is new in our Petunia assortment. Just as a reminder, as we go along, feel free to ask questions in the chat function of the webcast. We're manning the chat room and we'll answer any questions that come up as we go along. So let's start with our flagship Petunia series, Sanguna. This series has been developed for really big, bold, and beautiful containers and hanging baskets. Really large flowers that provide color coverage uh, from the top to the bottoms of the plants while selecting for strong mounding habits. These varieties work great to easily fill containers um, and they also work wonderful in combinations. For this upcoming year, we've got two fantastic new colors to add to the mix. I'm standing next to this gorgeous banana candy. I'm sure everybody's noticed yellow petunias are all the rage this season, and this variety offers a really beautiful mid-tone yellow flower color. And what I really like about it is this touch of rose right in the center of the flower. And as you have cooler night temperatures, this rose expression really comes out even stronger. This is a vigorous selection, so it'll be great as a component for mixed combinations or as a on its own in big baskets. Next to it is this outstanding mango punch. Talk about hitting on hot color trends. This new color is outstanding and this iridescent coral color, um, it's just really unique. Also a very vigorous selection. You can see it's got that fantastic mounded habit, tons of flowers on this variety. So with these two new intros, these are great selections for your early spring programs. They both have a minimum photo period requir requirement of 11 and a half hours for flowering. So make sure to check out the entire Sanguna lineup. We've got 21 varieties to choose from, so really there's something for everyone. Um, you can find all of our petunia information along with technical photo period and culture on our website, syngentaflowers-us.com. Moving on to deco petunias, this series is our powerhouse petunia for landscape performance, but it also has great versatility to work in small containers all the way up to hanging baskets. The smaller flower size on deco ensures really resilient color in the landscape, so no worries about snotty flowers after heavy summer rain. These varieties, they're designed to bounce back with no problem. This is our new deco sorbet for this season, and it's a perfect fit to the series. It's got this nice smaller flower size, really vigorous spreading habit. This baby's gonna work great in landscapes, also in combinations. Check out this really unique flower color. It's kind of an orange pink flower color that I think is just a super addition to our Deco series. So with Deco Sorbet, that puts us up to 12 colors in the Deco series. Um, again, a great series for landscape use and baskets. So last year, we were absolutely blown away from the response to our new Itsy Magenta introduction, which you can see over here. All across the country, we had unbelievable feedback from growers and garden trial managers about the awesome garden performance with the small flowered petunia. Our tagline, small but mighty, tough and tiny, it really delivered. So it makes introducing our latest addition to the Itsy Petunia series even more exciting. This is Itsy White. It's a perfect match to the magenta. It's got all the same toughness and flower power that you uh, learn to love from the magenta variety. We'd also like you to consider this Itsy Petunia, this white, as a replacement or a substitute for Bacopa in any of your summertime mixes. Instead of waiting for those small white blooms on the Bacopa to fade away when it gets hot in the heat, Itsy White just keeps on giving throughout the summer. So definitely keep an eye out. We've been working with fun mixes with Itsy, uh, Magenta, and White, and hopefully that gives you a little inspiration for your own combinations. And lastly, um, I don't know about you, but are you ready to bring a little bit more fun into your petunia programs? We definitely are, and we couldn't be more excited to share with you our first introduction into the Funhouse Petunia Collection. This is Potpourri. Check out this dynamic petunia. It's got such a unique flower color and pattern. This guy is gonna certainly be eye catcher at retail and in the garden. That combination of the dark rose and bright yellow uh, is just absolutely thrilling. Potpourri is our first variety in our new Funhouse collection of petunias. So we'll be offering really cool and unique flower colors and a lot of different various habits. 
We've got even more varieties coming down the line in the next couple years that we think are perfect for retail programs and also high consumer appeal. I mean, these are just really fun varieties. Potpourri in itself is a very interesting variety because that flower pattern, as you can see here, can change somewhat, definitely depending on your environment and PGR application. So I think this is a perfect opportunity to do a little bit deeper dive on those factors that influence the flower pattern on potpourri. So we'll hand it off to our technical expert, Jamie Gibson. Thank you, Amy. My name is Jamie Gibson, and I'm a technical lead for Syngenta Flowers. And today we're going to get into the specifics of flower pattern manipulation with Funhouse Potpourri. So our technical trialing team in Gilroy learned very early on that there are several factors that can influence the flower pattern. And those are plant growth regulators, light quality, and temperature. They also learned that photo period had no impact on the flower pattern. So let's focus in on plant growth regulators. When using B9 or Dimenazide as the primary PGR, the flower pattern primarily stays at a yellow color. Concentrations of 2,500 to 3,000 parts per million that are, that are applied to petunias will cause that flower pattern to be stable at yellow. When they applied bonsai drenches, at two parts per million, they found that the funhouse potpourri maintained its stability and had that bicolor expression. They also learned that when temperatures were very warm, say around 66 degrees Fahrenheit during the night, that the flower pattern was primarily a rose color. And this was really accelerated when the light levels were very low say around seven to nine moles of daily light integral or DLI. When you look at the very detailed specifics of the trial, in this particular graphic, you can see that on the top line, this is about seven and a half weeks after transplant. The bottom row shows you at about 13 weeks after transplant. And so here you can see as you're applying the dimenazide or B9 or Dazide at concentrations of 3,000 parts per million, that yellow pattern stays the same, very stable yellow. Even when moved into very high light conditions, over 25 moles per day, that plant expression stays at a yellow color. So even after nine weeks after the application, that yellow pattern was stable. When you do the bonsai drenches at say two parts per million, the flower pattern is stable. It's expressing the two colors. And then as that plant moves into higher light conditions, you can see that it intensifies in its stability and expresses those two colors. When B9 is used at lower concentrations with bonsai drenches, you do see the impact of the dimenazide showing you that yellow color but you can still see some distinct difference in the flower pattern. It really accentuates itself when it goes into higher light conditions at a later time period, and you are seeing that flower pattern stability. So B9 has a very big influence on that flower color, pushing it more to a yellow color. And of course, the final trial treatment where no PGRs were used, you can see that the flower pattern was stable, and it actually becomes accentuated when the light levels are higher. So a lot of big learnings. Using B9, Dimenazide, Dazide can cause that flower color to stay closer to a yellow, if not fully yellow. Using bonsai drenches at two parts per million are really suggested in order to have that bicolor expression. If you do use B9 and bonsai drenches, you may move that color more to yellow, but it may have some difference, and you may see some bicolor expression. And of course, not applying any PGRs, you will achieve that bicolor expression, and it intensifies instability when the plant is exposed to higher light conditions. So a lot of learnings. Now tomorrow, tune in at 11 a.m. Pacific to watch my colleague, Mike Margiano, as he reviews the newest spreading seed petunias, photo finish and flash forward. 
Okay, well, great, Jamie. That was awesome information yes. on that fun house. You guys do such cool research, and I think growers will really appreciate understanding how to make sure they get the flower pattern that they're hoping for for their customers, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Great technical team. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so we've got a few questions rolling in and right. in the, from the chat room. So let's let's see if we can man these questions. All right. First question here is, does ITZY require a lot of PGRs to make it look like the photos? Not really, and it is probably one of my favorite petunias just because of its grower friendliness. Tidy and just really a lot of, you know, the production protocols Natural are easy. branching. Yeah, and... dense canopy, um, just real easy to grow. Yeah, we promise those are not Photoshopped uh, plant pictures. They really sell themselves. Great genetics usually do all the talking for us for sure. And I love that the magenta and the white both have very similar habits. So let's mix them together in combos. I think they'll be a really important new type of petunia for our customers. Pop well together and just really yep. a nice, nice combo. Yep. We'll have a lot of fun with quick combos with those. Okay. The next question here. For what applications would you choose Sanguna versus Deco? I mean, what's the difference between them? So a lot more vigor with the Sanguna for that hanging basket, large hanging basket or deck planter, uh, really great as a monoculture crop in those uh, large platforms, uh, whereas, you know, deco, tidier, uh, easy to play with others in combinations, uh, court production really is its niche real sweet spot. For yeah, I do love we our uh, tagline for, for Sangunas is, of course, for building better baskets. So I love them in hanging baskets. So I think that's definitely where those products shine the best. And I agree the decos are so versatile, put them in a little pot all the way up to hanging baskets. And then don't forget the in ground applications to talk about a petunia made to go into the landscape with really super resilience for any kind of weather and continual color through the summer. Yeah, especially in the south with those heavy storms and rainfall, the rebound time is so quick, pops with color, just an outstanding landscape yep. item. No snotty petunias on those decos for sure. Okay, next question. When will more colors be added to the Funhouse series? Oh, I guess that one's That's for on me. You, uh, great news. We've got some right around the corner for introduction for 22-23 season. So I'm expecting to have at least three, maybe four. We'll see. We'll see how things shake out, but same novel flower types. The neat part about the Funhouse collection will be that we'll have various types of plants. So we'll have some that are more upright, some that are more of a hanging basket type, different flower size, but all with those really unique flower patterns. And the technical trialing team will have all of the kinks worked out and how to produce these crops. Our growers will see this in the trialing process. Everybody will be so excited to have these launched. They're, they're fun. Absolutely. It's gonna be really fun petunias. Okay. Potpourri looks really fun. I agree. Thank you, chat friends. Uh, do you think a retailer would promote it as a color changing petunia? I think so. For me, when I saw how that potpourri color pattern changes, I thought this is the kind of um, things I get back from my friends and family when they see really cool flowers out in their garden. They're always amazed by flowers that have surprises, you know, so if you get a little bit of a different variation on the flower pattern, I think that's really exciting for consumers who are maybe not necessarily horticulturists, but love flowers. Um, so I think, I think the color changing aspect is something we should promote. Yes. For sure. It's different. It's fun. Yeah. And weather is always going to change temperature, light levels will impact that pattern in the, in the uh, garden. Yeah. Okay, next question here, Jamie. On the deco petunias, do they flower evenly across the series? Absolutely, that's one of the goals in product management is to ensure that the deco series is just solid when it comes to photo period response. So very uniform uh, in their flowering response for the greenhouse grower. I think we should shout out all the work that our technical trialing team does uh, with the help of Dr. Allison, who is on the the webinar here with us today. Um, we have that grower success guide that I know you guys put a ton of work into, but it gives us all the different minimum photo period requirements. Yes. So maybe you want to talk a little bit about why photo period is 
those minimum requirement hours are important for growers to understand? Yeah, sure. So knowing when when that flower will initiate, um, especially in short shorter day day lengths in the spring, to give you more evenness, more bench run of shipping these plants so that you're not um, staging the plants at different times, uh, bringing all the colors to the retailer at the same time is the goal. And also just the, the amount of work that's done um, on the farms to just provide a really outstanding vegetative right. cutting, its performance and propagation. And then as the grower receives these liners, the, the budding occurs at the right time, not too early, really lets the canopy develop, and then the flowering comes on a few weeks before retail right. sale. We love bench running product. Every, every grower's goal should be to pick up every color at once and get it on a cart out to the store. So that's our, always our goal in breeding as well, is trying to select for very tight yes. uh, flowering windows for that benefit. And in the southern locations, uh, in the winter time, where Petunias are marketed in the landscape. Having that flower response is critical. Right. Okay. Another follow-up question on Fun House. I'm glad everybody is paying attention to the this great introduction. What color should retail sell it as first? Yellow or magenta, or will it change color through the summer? I think for most regions, they can market it as a, a true buy color. So with that nice dark rose, yellow center. Um, and really that yellow, I think you did a great job explaining that that's pretty much a function of PGR application, right? Correct. The domenicide, whether it's B9 or dayside, will influence that color stability. And so that yellow pattern uh, will, will display itself when that chemistry is applied to the plant. So we like yellow petunias. They're very popular, but I think we want that bicolor out at retail. And then into the summer, I would expect that that bicolor flower pattern is going to persist with the very uh, long days, highlight intensity, and maybe towards the end of the summer you may get into more of those rosy yeah. hues as right. days get shorter, yeah. cooler. Days might get uh, you know shorter, of course, but uh, we have plenty of warm nights into late summer into early fall, mm -hmm. so that rose will definitely yeah. show itself. Yeah, I love these color-changing petunias. I think this is a really fun item. Ooh, this one looks pretty technical. Are you ready for this, Dr. Gibson? Yeah, I'll do my best. Okay, which of these series require the least amount of PGRs for maximum flower power? Okay, let me read this I question. I know, this yes, is, it's a little, we're testing yeah, you now. You know, it's live, putting okay. them. <laughs> which of these series require okay, the least Okay, so Sanguna PGRs? definitely needs PGR, right? No doubt, yes. Bonsai applications. Bonsai applications, uh, primarily the drenches are gonna do a nice job of control, um, and it's a very grower-friendly way to apply the, the plant growth retardant. Okay, deco, kind of in, in the middle, right? In the middle, um, you know, uh, depending on environmental conditions in the greenhouse time of year of production, it may require an uptick in concentration just to contain it. Yeah, especially because they're so spreading, right? Um, Fun House is gonna be a medium vigor variety, so. Yeah, so. You know, definitely using okay. those bonsai drench concentrations anywhere between one to two parts per million is recommended. Okay, and then ITSI is probably the easiest to produce in terms of PGR applications, wouldn't you say? Yes, very little application really does it itself um, because of that dense canopy and tidiness. Uh, maybe a touch of bonsai um, at the end just, just to for hold. Just a little tone, mm -hmm. right? To keep a tone. Okay, so next question here, when can we expect more darker colors for Sanguna? Okay, so I think the question is like, black petunias I know are popular. We all have all sorts of varieties in our, our pipeline. So of course for Sanguna, it's really important that it matches the profile. So that's always, and then looking for some colors to add in. Um, so we have already the Sanguna Merlot, which is one of my favorite Sanguna varieties, really deep, deep, dark red uh, color. Um, but yeah, we continue to work with the breeders and, and uh, look for a nice assortment of core colors along with the novelty patterns. Well, Dr. Gibson, I, I think 
we've got questions. We, that was our last question from uh, our viewers. So we'd like to thank everybody for joining us here at Webcast. Yeah. Aren't we the lucky ones out here in California? Beautiful weather. Enjoying the beautiful grounds. It's a gorgeous day in California. So we missed those of you who weren't able to join us uh, for CAST this year. I hope the information we've been sharing with you has helped you kind of understand what's new in the assortment. Make sure that you guys join tomorrow. We've got Mike Mergiano, our favorite seed product manager. He'll be out talking about our new seed crops, uh, petunia crops, photo finish, and flash forward, yes. which are really important and great products as well. So make sure you guys tune in for that tomorrow morning. I think it's uh, 10 or 11 a.m. 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Okay, thank you. Yes. We're got to get the time zones right. <laughs> so, uh, thanks again for joining. Thank you, Jamie, for all the My great pleasure. work you do. My pleasure. My pleasure. Great. Thank you for bringing great products to the marketplace. Ah, we're such a dream team. <laughs>